Just remember, FPL is tough, but you are tougher. Hi guys, I'm FPL Ninfria and welcome back to the home of FPL videos. Happy New Year to you. It's been a little while since I did my last video, so I'll just give you guys a quick breakdown of what's been going on and how I got to my highest OR this season before doing my blank Game Week 18 and double Game Week 19 preview. Oh, and for those of you who gave me good feedback about being in the video last time, I do plan to do that more going forward, just working on some graphics for it. So here we go, game week 15 was a great game week for me as I finally made it back into the top 2 million club. I had two free transfers to play and with that I decided to start looking ahead to the double game week. So I got in two Leeds players against Burnley, Bamford and Dallas. Both paid off handsomely thankfully with a clean sheet from Dallas and a goal from Bamford. A tip of the hat to Martinez and Bednarak here with their monster points for me and captain in Bruno over Salah would have seen me even better off as would play in Sushek who was first on my bench. Still 59 points is nothing to be sniffed at and was above the average and enough to see me with a good green arrow and a rise in OR. Game week 16 was also successful but the transfers made here have caused me some problems with the rescheduling. Firstly let's look at the positives. I wanted to focus towards the double game week and at the time we didn't have the City or United fixture rescheduled. I also wanted Robson back for the double so I took a hit to take out KDB be our Mitchell ouch, for Rafinha and Robertson. Again, two transfers that paid off handsomely at the time in game week 16. Robertson got a clean sheet and bonus points, whilst Rafinha got me a goal, clean sheet and bonus points. Again, Dallas and Bamford came in good, so those transfers were definitely on the positive side. And to be honest, it would be easier to say who let me down this game week rather than who didn't in game week 16, as only Martinez, Sushek and Adams did didn't return for me. Though I do have to admit I was a tad lucky here though with a decent bench as the cancellations to the Spurs and Everton matches meant I got Bednarak and Rafinha in for them. 68 points and my best game week rank of the season skyrocketed me up the rankings with the average sitting at 37 points. I was left after game week 16 sat at 1.2 million my highest OR this season. So on to game week 17, a week that has been both amazing and terrible in good measures. Martinez was a save god in the Man United match. I am sure he got way more than the seven saves that were actually actually recorded, though he banked three points even though he conceded like a G. In defence, a bit of a mixed bag here, I was grateful that Chilwell started after I played him over Dallas, however Chelsea were absolutely terrible and he got me just one point after conceding three goals against Manchester City. A little unexpected given their lineup. Hmm, bit annoyed on that one. Soufal did do me proud however with his clean sheet for six points and Robertson will have to see how he got on in Monday night as I'm recording this Monday afternoon. In midfield, I can't complain. Fernandez striked again and bagged all three bonus points from it, adding 10 points to my team total. Sushek delivered his first return for my starting 11, getting a goal and a clean sheet for 11 points against Everton. It was looking a tad worrying when I captained Sonny over Fernandez after Bruno delivered, but boy did Sonny step up. I needed just one more goal from him to complete the sunny six and it just so happened to be his 100th goal for Spurs. For some reason it just felt right to captain him and a goal, assist and clean sheet for 13 points double to 26 was a big help towards my team total. Salah's points again recording this Monday afternoon. Rafinha was a bit of a letdown considering he was my KDB replacement last game week. This one hurt simply because he had a shot on target and three attempted assists. Him and Bamford could have had way more points if they had finished each other's chances. Moving to my forwards and there's not much to report here either really. Is it time to sell Cavett Lewin possibly with no double game week and two blanks or are we just seeing a bit of a lull from him? Hmm it's just really tough to know but with just two points from him and the same from Bamford haven't had a great forward line this game week. I'm recording this Monday before the Liverpool versus Southampton match so it's 
hard to know if playing Che or Bednarak would have seen me better off. And the reason I say that this game week has been both good and bad in equal measures is because obviously looking ahead to the blanks and doubles and not having that scheduling news from Man City and Man United, it has mean that losing KDB has put me in a very difficult position. Anyway, all of what happened this week means that my top scorers for Game Week 17 at the time of recording this are Bruno Fernandes, Choo Choo Thomas Suchek and Sunny as my captain and completing the Sunny 6. I'm free! I'm finally free! Question is, do I want to be? I'm not sure that I do. Hmm, want to think about that. So with all of that, here are my points so far at the time of recording this. Currently on for a green arrow and should see me winning my first game in the cup as we both have Robertson left and I have Salah in hand if both of those players play, with me currently winning 63 to 53. I'm also currently sat at 1.1 million. Here's hoping that by the time this video comes out that I'll be in the top 1 million. Keep your fingers crossed for me and I'll pin my score to the top of the comments underneath this video. Okay, so looking ahead to Blank Game Week 18, I'm recording this Monday afternoon as I've mentioned in order to get this video out early on Tuesday. That means I'm recording this before the Prime Ministerial address this evening. There are rumours sport could be halted, though they are just rumours, so the next bit of my video is obviously made with things going ahead as planned currently. With that in mind and everything continuing as planned, I can't help feel a bit stuffed over by the rescheduling for the next two games Game weeks, I'm not gonna lie. If I knew KDB had a double in 19, there is no way I would have sold him. Not a chance in hell. And I would have likely plumped for a city defender over Chilwell given that news too. Also, by chasing the double bench boost, I have sold two cheap assets who weren't at the time getting any game time, who could now play in that game week. And that's Mitchell and Forster. Forster went for Sanchez this game week just because I knew I'd be free hitting and I wanted a 4.4 keeper that would allow me DCL to Vardy if I wanted to do that for the double. I regret this a lot. Sanchez doesn't look good at all and now Forster may actually play in the double game week and he's much cheaper. I likely have to hit for a better goalkeeper if I want to bench boost in 19. So with me locked into chasing the double, I am left with only four players for game week 18 and one of them is a second goalkeeper. If you have more players and you aren't sure if to free hit, here are some questions you can ask yourself that may May help you decide. Number one, if you make normal transfers to get out blanking players for starting players in game week 18, are you selling players that you will want to keep long term and lose value on? If yes, then free hit. Number two, are you happy to have a few players less than others and muddle through this week hoping the free hit serves you better down the line? If yes, don't free hit. Third and lastly, are there players that really worry you for either the blank or the double that concern you enough that you just can't get to without a free hit? If the answer is yes to this one, free hit in either of those weeks to accommodate them. Hope that's helped a little bit. With me having to take way too many hits and having to sell players that I've built up a lot of value on and that I want to keep long term, then it's definite that I'll be doing a free hit. So with that in mind, here's my first draft for game week 18. I won't be hitting the free hit button until the very last moment though, so I advise you guys do the same, because once you confirm the free hit, it can't be undone. And with so much uncertainty at the moment, I just don't think we should risk it. So here's my initial thoughts. Sheffield United are a team struggling to score at the moment, so I thought Darlow could be a shout as a possible clean sheet candidate. Edison would be up there also as a goalkeeper pick, but there's uncertainty around whether he'll return. A little more information and Stefan could be a shout, but without knowing that at the moment I've gone double city defence. If I want Sterling in for Rashford though, this spot could be moved to a 4.3 and one of Mitchell or Yedling could be risked in the starting 11. Tini would be added more for his attacking threat rather than my confidence of a clean sheet, even if Arsenal do look a little better at the back at the moment. Sace is also in my consideration for that defence. In midfield, KDB comes back in to cover at least one of the three game weeks of doom, especially now as I'm going to have to do some major surgery if I want him for the double game week. Bruno and Sun keep their place in my team based on form. Saka 
Becca would be my punt of the game week. I'm so glad Arteta is playing him again. He's a great player. After the double, I'll be looking to move him back into my team. But Neto also looks like a nice shout for this cheap spot. Rashford gets the final midfielder spot. If I stick with the 3-5-2, this spot will likely change between Rashford, Sterling, Grealish and Saha until I'm settled on who I feel really comfortable with. Up front, it was a tough decision whether to keep Calvert-Lewin. I think I'll likely drop to chase better fixtures for one game week in Kane and Wilson. If I move back to a 3-4-3, he could be reconsidered, but I'd probably be likely to consider a riskier punt in Lacazette or Martial for that third striker spot. And it would be funded by dropping Rashford to Neto. As for my captaincy choice, it will be one of the penalty takers, either KDB, Bruno or Kane, probably edging towards Bruno at the moment just because of his consistency. As the turnaround between 18 and 19 is so quick, I'm unlikely to get a video out between the two. So here's my team for double game week 19 and of course all of this is subject to change but I have three single game week players that I'll inherit back in game week 19 that's Sanchez, Sun and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I will decide on a bench boost nearer the time based on our current situation and injuries. At the moment it's hard to look past a bench boost so a hit for City players either defensive via Chilwell or one of the premium mids to KDB may be on the cards or Dominic Calvalua de Vardy as planned may well go ahead. I'll keep you guys up to date on social media as always. My Twitter and Instagram can be found in the description below. And lastly moving on to the trending transfers this week let's take a look at the players in and out ahead of game week 18. Of the goalkeepers Martinez is the trendiest goalkeeper in with 70 plus thousand purchases at the time of recording. Leno is the next highest with over 27,000 buys. McCarthy is the most transferred out goalkeeper ahead of game week 18 owing to his positive result with 32 plus thousand sales. The next highest out is Mendy with 29 plus thousand managers getting rid of the Chelsea goalkeeper. Of the defenders, James is leading the way for sales out this week due to injury with over 105,000 managers selling the Chelsea man. Teammate Zuma is the second most transferred out with 89 plus thousand sales. Tini is the trendiest defender in with 109 9,000 plus purchases. Creswell is the second most transferred in defender with over 104,000 purchases. In midfield, Saka is the trendiest midfielder in this week after his goal, resulting in 122 plus thousand buys. Sushek is the second most transferred in with over 114,000 buys. Salah is the most switched out midfielder this week with 117 plus thousand sales. Ward Prowse is the next highest midfielder sold this week with over 70 5,000 managers selling on the Southampton man. Up front, Calvin Lewin is the trendiest forward out surprisingly this week with 149 plus thousand managers moving on the Everton man. Bamford again surprisingly is the second most sold forward this week with over 82,000 sales. Wilson is the front runner in the forward category this week with over 90,000 purchases. Bamford despite being the second most sold is also the second most bought forward ahead of of blank game week 18 with 71 plus thousand buys and that's it you guys i'm hoping we get back to a bit more of a normal schedule soon in order for me to get the dream team stream back on track and we'll tweet out as normal if the wildcats get to stream this week but for now thanks for watching please don't forget to check out the sponsors of this video fantasyfootballfix.com and before you go don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell until next time happy new year to you all, Nymphria out.